I think Alabama tomorrow, they could be in trouble if this happens. And of course, as an Alabama fan, this isn't something I want to happen. This isn't even something I want to think about it, but it could happen. I know, I know, I know what's running through your mind right now. Matt, what are you doing up this late? You got to wake up early tomorrow morning. And actually, I still got to go to the gym tonight, which that's going to be late. And I got to get up at 5 a.m. to do my morning run. So, yeah, I should probably, A, be at the gym right now or B, be in bed. But here we are making this video. And the reason I'm making this video is because I couldn't stop thinking about this Alabama-Texas game. Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. I just read a comment section on one of the previous videos. What is this? I love the videos. Hashtag Matt B. Ball. Like, I'm used to that by now. But, y'all, let's start the hashtag Matt B. Megamind train? What? And then you got this one right here, hashtag Matt Archibald. Hashtag Matt B. Bald is the greatest thing to ever happen to me. It gives me light at the end of the tunnel that I didn't know was there. The baldness shining on my eyes were blinded me by the light like the weekend. And ever since, or the lights like the weekend. And ever since then, we're now best friends. Thank you, hashtag Matt B. Bald. Uh, you're welcome, I guess. I, I can't get over this. Matt B. Megamind train? What? Let's just, let's get back on travel to video. Most of y'all know we already did the preview for that game, and what I said in that preview still holds true. This isn't a preview, this isn't a rebuttal, or anything like that. But before this game kicks off tomorrow, there's a couple more things I want to speak on. And what I want to speak on is this right here. You could see some craziness happen in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, maybe craziness isn't the word I'm looking for. I'm more so of trying to say this. I think Alabama tomorrow, they could be in trouble if this happens. And of course, as an Alabama fan, this isn't something I want to happen. This isn't even something I want to think about it, but it could happen. And I think all my Alabama fans out here, you need to consider this as a possibility whether you like it or not. I don't know why I said whether you like it or not, because of course you're not going to like this. What did I say in my preview? I got Alabama winning this game. I think it's going to be close, 27-21. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. I do expect Jalen Miller to play decent. Of course, I expect my quarterback to play somewhat good, but it's more so of I expect the offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese and Nick Saban, to only allow Jalen Miro to throw the ball at max 25 times. I'd be shocked if Jalen Miro even passed 21 or 22 pass attempts. I think Alabama's going to try to establish a run, and they're also going to give Jalen Milro at bare minimum, 10 carries. You're going to see Jalen Milro have a lot of quarterback runs, whether it's designed or not. That's a part of his game. He's a dual threat quarterback, and I think that's a great thing. But here's something I thought about today, and I was like, you know what? I probably should have talked about this. What happened last year when this Alabama team, Big Bad Alabama, went to Texas? We got bullied. The bully got bullied. We got shoved into a locker. That Texas front seven embarrassed our offensive line. They ran straight through them like that one pot toilet paper in middle school. It was terrible, and it's still miraculous that we came out of there with a win. There's no way, not a single chance in the world we win that game if Bryce Young isn't the quarterback. No way. And even at that, we still got lucky to win. Texas missed a field goal. Bryce Young, Daniel had a safety. There's just a lot of things that went our way. The ball was in our favor. We got lucky. I'll leave it at that. Well, here's something I thought about. If that Texas front seven bull rushed us and we couldn't give Bryce Young any time and we couldn't even run the ball, why wouldn't that happen tomorrow? You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it happened last year. And for those of y'all don't know, Alabama's offensive line, yes, they're monstrous, but it's a lot of new guys. Does Alabama's offensive line have enough chemistry up until this point? It's only week two. Let's think about this for a second. What if our run game is the same as last year's? I want to pull it up. I'm curious. I want to see how many rushing yards we had. And remember, Jace McClellan, he broke off a 75-yard touchdown. Okay, so here we have it. Last year, we had total 161 rushing yards. Remember, out of those 161, 75 came on one play. So you take away that one play, we had less than 100 rushing yards. In our rushing attack, it wasn't there. We couldn't run the ball to save our life. Heck, we really couldn't even give Bryce Young any time to pass at all either. Well, here's my thing, Bama fans. What if Texas, they put seven, eight in the box, and they said, hey, Jalen Milrow, you're going to have to beat us. What if Jalen Milrow, he starts doing his quarterback runs and he can't go anywhere, and Texas is determined to make Jalen Milrow throw the football? Can Jalen Milrow beat Texas just by his arm? I don't know. And I think anybody that would give you a definitive answer on that, they're just straight up lying because nobody knows. We don't even really have a sample size to go off of. But okay, let's give Alabama and Jalen Milrow the benefit of the doubt. Let's say the running game is somewhat working and Jalen Milrow, everything's going slightly better than last year. Let's say we're moving the ball up and down the field and we're scoring some points. Well, what if Alabama's defense can't stop Quinn Ewers in Texas? Then at this point in time, 
is Jalen Monroe great enough, not just good enough, but great enough to lead Alabama to a victory in a shootout? Because nobody's questioning Alabama's offense. We're like, yeah, Jalen Monroe, he's good enough to score you 35 points. But if we get into a shootout like we did multiple times with Bryce Young the past two years, can Jalen Milrow play a perfect game? Can Jalen Milrow go out here and throw for 375, 400 yards and five touchdowns? You see what I'm saying? That is something that would slightly concern me if the defense for Alabama isn't playing that great. I know we're only one game in, guys, but what is the identity of this Alabama football team? Run first. We want to run the ball first, play action for Milrow, give him a couple deep throws, that's it. This team will play, and I believe they currently play better when they have the lead or it's tied. I think you know exactly where I'm about to go with this. What happens if old Sartnado and Queen Quinn Ewers, they come into Tuscaloosa, they receive the ball first, go down, march down the field, get seven points, we punt, and then Quinn Ewers and Sartnado, they score another touchdown. Just like that in the first quarter, Alabama's down 14-0. Is Jalen Milrow and the Alabama offense even equipped to come back from a deficit like that? I don't know. i tell you this much, though, as an Alabama fan, I don't want to see Jalen Milrow leading an Alabama offense 14 points behind. When we had Bryce Young back there, I'll tell you straight up, I didn't care if we was down by 20 points. I felt confident. We got the best quarterback in the nation. But this year, it's a different story. You see this Bama team get down by 14, 17 points? I don't know if they can come back. I'm not saying it couldn't happen or it wouldn't happen, just saying they're not built to come back. And yet again, it's going to go back to this. We get down 14 or 17 points, you know Jalen Milrow, he's going to be pressed or he's going to feel pressed to make a big-time superhero play, and then that's when disaster could strike. If you watched Alabama and Texas a and last year, you know what I'm talking about. And of course, I'm playing negative Nancy here, but these are just some of my thoughts that came into my mind today. Because as a fan of your favorite team, you always want to think of the positive. You always want to think of what great could happen. Does that even make sense? I don't know. Is that even the right wording? My point is, you want to think of the greatest possible outcome. Whereas, you need to come to terms with reality, there's also an outcome where Jalen Milrow goes out here and throws a couple interceptions, and Texas comes into Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and they just steamroll us. Because let's not act like Alabama didn't have one of the best teams in the country heading into the championship game, and Trevor Lawrence and Devo Sweeney beat us 44-16. to If you would have told me heading into that game that we had lost by 30 points and the game was over after the four-minute mark in the first quarter, I'd have laughed at you and thought you was crazy. So you see what I'm saying, Bama fans? I don't want you to think I'm crazy or hating on us, our own team, because I think this could be a possibility. I'm just giving you some options stuff that could happen. Don't be surprised by anything. And it goes back to this. I said this in the preview. What makes this game so intriguing is because we don't know what to expect out of Texas, which is kind of normal at this point. But we also don't know what to expect out of Alabama. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't be shocked if Alabama won this game by 30 points. And I also wouldn't be shocked if we lost by 17 points. I wouldn't. We just don't know what's going to happen. The opportunities are endless. Now, of course, that's not my prediction. I'm predicting us to win this game. But anything can happen. I hope it's a good game just for the entertainment standpoint. And I do believe it's going to be a good game. Brian Denny Stadium, man. What an atmosphere that's going to be. Heck, man, I heard the atmosphere today was already crazy. I can't imagine what it's going to be like all day tomorrow. It's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. Let me know in the comment section. I bet some of y'all watching this, you got some tickets or you're going to the game. Who's going? Brian Denny's got that new light show. And oh, yeah, by the way, I meant to talk about this in a preview. I completely forgot. What about Alabama? So last year when Alabama went to Texas, you know what they did? Texas gave our band. They didn't give us regular, the band students, like the people that played the band, you get what I'm saying, Matt. Shut the crap up and get to move on. They gave the band tickets at the highest part of the stadium. Why am I bringing that up? Because Alabama returned the favor. They gave Texas, their band, the same thing. They gave them tickets in the highest part of the stadium where you can't even hear them play. I just thought that was funny. You kind of get the sense of, hey, this could be a heated game. It could be some bad blood there. You never know. I myself, of course, I'm excited. And you already know, you're going to get my live reaction to this game. So come on back Saturday night at about... 9 30 well it'll probably upload it probably be uploaded at like 10 o'clock you get my live reaction hopefully it's a good reaction but if alabama loses uh yeah if you don't see a video just mind your own business <laughs> i'll leave it at that the last thing i need in my life right now is for alabama to lose i would be highly upset we'll leave it at that highly upset highly upset but yeah i i need to go to bed actually i need to go to the gym then go to bed gotta wake up run in the mornings uh let me know your thoughts down below but uh robin